so how do you comply? Again, here is the policy in short. Any article that has been accepted for publication at, on or after April 7, 2008, even if it's in press, uh, it's been peer reviewed, it's been funded by an NIH grant, needs to be in compliance. Okay? And when you do this, and you will find in our gatekeepers up in front, when you send them a proposal, a non-competing renewal, um, a progress report, and you cite something, and there's no, P, there's no number showing compliance, either a NIH manuscript submission ID or a PubMed Central ID, they will send it back to you and say, you need to be in compliance. We cannot move it forward to NIH. Um, who is responsible? Okay, the responsible person is the principal investigator whose grant has been acknowledged, even if they are not an author on the manuscript. Okay? Often there are training grants, center grants, which have a lot of faculty on there who use funding from the training grant or the core funding. They have to make sure or work with the PI on that grant to make sure anything that they publish where they acknowledge that funding that they have deposited it. And you, if, you were, if one of your faculty or you as a faculty are on any of those types of grants and they come to a point where they have to do uh, renewal, they will come back to you and say, we need to make sure you have complied because you've acknowledged our, our training grant. And that would be um, when you're gonna have to get, start running quickly and get it deposited. The institution, and that's why we have these gatekeepers up in front, the institution also needs to make sure that all their NIH grantees are complying, because we get a lot of NIH grant funding, so it's um, incumbent upon the institution, which are these, people up front, to make sure that all their researchers are complying. Okay. Not just NIH grant holders, or, uh, but there are other um, and, uh, grant holders that need to comply. For example, the Howard Hughes Institute, their grantees are required to follow this through if, if you are working with or for an N, uh, Howard Hughes uh, Medical Institute researcher, they have a little more stringent requirements. What's nice about uh, Howard Hughes is that they will deposit the final version and they will deposit it for their researchers. So that's nice. There's also something called PubMed Central UK. Anyone who's got funding through the Wellcome Trust, which is similar to our NIH, they need to deposit as well. I had an instance where someone came back and, and the, they were working on a training grant or a core grant, and they said, well, I've deposited this, the faculty, uh, it's been deposited by my collaborator at Wellcome Trust at UK PMC. That number won't work. They may have acknowledged the Wellcome Trust grant, but if they've also acknowledged the training grant or that PI's grant, they need to deposit it into PubMed Central. So there needs to be two deposits. So maybe you just don't want to collaborate with somebody in the UK. <laughs> okay, steps in complying. Determine if the publication needs to be, needs to be uh, meet the compliance. Um, address copyright, submit the manuscript, and then include either the PubMed Central ID, which we'll explain a little more as we move on, or the NIH manuscript submission system in anything that you cite. That includes if you're including somebody's bio sketch in your grant application or in the training grant, which may have 60 um, faculty, and they send you the bio sketch. So if you are managing a training grant or a core grant and you need to be in, uh, renewing it, you should really start early 
because you may have 60 faculty that you have to make sure that their bio sketches are in compliance. Okay. Now, as far as copyright, this is really important. Um, since I don't publish in any journal that I need to comply because I don't have an NIH grant, I, I'm assuming that some publishers will send you the copyright agreement where they will ask, has this been funded by an NIH grant? If it doesn't say that, it's there. you can add, even in pencil, um, pen or whatever, to the copyright agreement saying this manuscript was funded in part by an NIH grant. It, I need to comply with the policy. And there, most publishers understand that at this point, after four plus years, that this is the case. But you can write it on the copyright agreement. There's nothing says you can't. And they need to be aware that you are going to comply. Again, here's the policy. So again, repeating is very important, upon acceptance for publication. Again, because you don't want to lose track of that manuscript. The 12 months doesn't mean you have 12 months to deposit. It means, and we'll see what that means, is embargoing it. And we're going to see what an embargo means. Uh, if you just received notification that it's going to be published, you need to embargo the release of it for 12 months. You need to let the journal have the first bite of the apple to get the full text out there. And I'll show you what this looks like when you deposit something into the system. Again, here are the steps, peer-reviewed, accepted for, here's the date, and arising from some NIH funding. And those uh, researchers that are at NIH, for example, the National Cancer Institute, and they publish something, they also need to comply and they need to follow the same steps as the person out there that's not at NIH. Again, talking about copyright, again, you can write this in your copyright agreement before you sign it if there's nothing there indicating that you check it for saying it was NIH funded. So what do you have to consider? Number one it is what submission system you're going to use, what version of the paper that you will be make available in PubMed Central. Remember, you cannot click on like the M get it button and download the PDF, that cannot be deposited. So remember that, even if you're supporting someone and say, well, here it is, here's the PDF, you need to come back to them or else give a link to the uh, public access policy saying that belongs, to, that belongs to the journal. Once you sign that copyright agreement, uh, the author signs it, every, it belongs to the journal including the page proofs. Okay, so don't try to deposit page proofs. Usually on the on cross it will say destroy after. So that's, you can't deposit that. So you submit the paper and then there needs to be approval of the, what is deposited into the NIMS system. Until that approval is given, PubMed Central ID will not be assigned. 